This is standard lighting, and it's what your miniatures normally look like. And it's fine. It looks good, it's pleasing, it's easy to watch as a video. But this is contrast, and it's going to punch your models right up to the max. And that is how we're going to improve your entire backlog. Zenithal highlights for beginners. Welcome to the basic brush. Before we start this video, if you're looking for great content, give us a like and a subscribe so you can get even more delivered into your inbox. Zenithal highlighting. What is it? Well, zenithal comes from zenith, which means when something is at its highest point. In particular, we're talking about when the sun is at its highest point in the sky. When the sun is directly above, it creates lots of shadows because it's a high intensity light. Take this clip. This is me sitting under a large diffuse, that means it's a soft light. Whereas here, I'm using a bright light up close, and you'll see the amount of contrast it creates. The definition of each of the features, creating stark differences between the light and the dark spots on my face. Zenithal highlighting, as it's called, is where we prep your model at the priming phase with more than one colour. A dark colour, a mid colour, and a light colour. Now I'm going to use black, grey and white, but you could use any colour, dark blue, mid blue and light blue if you're painting space marines. Well, ultramarines specifically. I mean, you could do it in Crimson's Fist. Never mind. The point is, is I'm going to be using it on the traditional colours, but you can use any colour you want. Why should you bother doing it? Well, firstly, it's about pumping up that contrast to make your models have a bit of a punch. Secondly, it's going to mean that we can tell where the light and the dark spots are meant to be to make our model look more realistic. We'll use the zenithal as a guide for where to put our highlights and where to put our shadows when painting. Thirdly, they make for more interesting models when they're just on the tabletop by themselves. Take this unpainted model. It's not that interesting because light doesn't really pull anywhere. Now compare it to its zenithally highlighted counterpart. Look how much more interesting this model is and how much better experience it's going to be on the tabletop. Finally, zenithal highlighting works great when you're using transparent paints. Things like inks or, well, funnily enough, contrast paints. The way these paints work is by settling into the recesses which we have just sprayed black. And they sit on the highlights that we've just left white. So, how do we do it? Well, there's three ways we can go about it. Brushes, spray cans, and an airbrush. The first way, the brush, is usable by anyone. Anyone can do this. Undercoat your model black with a nice big brush. Make sure it's fully dry, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a dry brush. This can be any brush that has lots and lots of bristles, preferably quite short to make it sturdy. We're not gonna use this trash, or this admittedly very expensive trash. Instead, we're going to use this. This is a common standard makeup brush that you can buy for about £5 for a whole pack out or 8 bucks on Amazon. We're going to take this brush and we're going to put some grey on it and then we're going to wipe off almost all of the colour until I've just got a little bit left. We're then going to take this brush and we're going to brush down the model towards the base then, once we've done the grey brush, we're going to clean our brush off nice and thoroughly, make sure it's nice and dry, and then we're going to do the same thing with white. But this time, we're going to brush only on the top half of the model. Everything below this, I'm going to leave that grey colour with the blacks in the recesses. I'm going to focus my dry brush on the top sections, so the top part of this model. This is going to create a gradient where naturally the eye is drawn up towards the lightest part. The only downside of brushes is undercoating with a brush takes a long time. And only when you're using dry brushing as a whole, if your brush is too dry, you end up with a chalky effect. So you want a little bit of moisture in the brush itself. Myth number two. Myth number two is the spray can, and it is the fastest of all of them. I use this on all of my rank and flank models, like in the A Song of Ice and Fire miniature game. You spray your models, but this time, instead of spraying all over, we're going to try and conserve some paint. I'm going to tilt my models back, and I'm going to spray upwards, so I'm catching the underneath of the model. Now, I'm not going to try and spray the top of the model at all in black, because instead, what we're going to do now is we're going to take the grey and spray all the bits we missed. We're also going to lightly dust down the way on those up-facing surfaces. Finally, I'm going to take the white. 
and I'm going to do the same thing, but this time I'm going to focus from a sort of a 45 degree angle from above to gently cloak the tops of the models. The advantage of this is, of course, it is the fastest method, and for armies, it is definitely the one I'd recommend. However, it can be costly rattling through all these cans, and it can also not be very precise. So when you want to add that final highlight, maybe consider using the brush method for the white layer. Go in there and just fine tune where those highlights are going to be. The final method is the airbrush. The airbrush allows you a nice mix between the two. Whilst you can't use the rattle cans inside, often you can use in a well ventilated area your air guns, which is perfect when you're in a hot country or, like here, a very wet country. Same method as before, I'm going to spray black up from the bottom, catching all of the shadowy parts of the model. Then I'm going to spray grey down from the top, and finally catch all of my key focal points from above with that white. If you really want to get into this, consider using a white ink. I know airbrushes can seem out of reach for a lot of people, but I bought this one and its compressor for just £100. It's the Sparmax, and I got that on eBay. So definitely consider it, especially if a friend has one that you can maybe borrow. Lastly, how did I get on with all of my miniatures? Well, before I show you how many there are, here are all of the boxes containing all of the built miniatures from board games and miniature games. Put down below in the comments how many miniatures you think there are. Whilst you're down there, why don't you click on the subscribe button so you can make sure you're getting more great content like this every single week. And now a little time lapse of me setting up all of those wonderfully painted miniatures. Hope you enjoyed this and I will see you in the next one.